Hey, brother! And Happy New Year's, everyone! Guys, today we are going to sniff out the answer to something Voldemort can only stick his tongue out at and get to the bottom of what happened to his nose and why he looks like a snake. Get it because snakes smell by sticking their tongue out like so in case you're still searching for a good new year's resolution look no further i have a great one for you read more books and what better book reading assistant could there be than an excellent coffee mug filled with carlin brothers coffee which fun fact you can now subscribe to which means you will never find yourself in the position of oh my gosh i ran out of coffee how am i supposed to read books what do and as an added bonus when you subscribe you get your first bag 50 percent off and every bag after that 20 percent off so it's like extra coffee saving money reading more books win 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 carlinbrotherscoffee.com Okay, but so back to Voldesnort, or I mean, can he even? <laughs> that was the worst snort ever. So we all know that the further and further Tom Riddle traveled down the path of darkness, the more his body and face became disfigured. He lost all of his excellent, gangly, awkward teenage... Oh, wait, sorry, that's the wrong photo. He lost all of his striking good looks and slowly became a pale, bald, red-eyed, red-eyed, menacing, slits-for-nostrils, dark wizard. So the why he transforms isn't much of a mystery to me, but my bigger question is, why specifically does he end up looking like a snake? Like, would anyone else who went down this terrible path also end up with, like, a nosectomy? Or is there just something about Voldemort that lends himself to a snakiness? Basically, are snakes inherently evil, or is Voldemort inherently snaky? Because honestly, both seem like pretty good options. I mean, <laughs> snakes, right? By the way, I have to show you guys my favorite wand that we own. It's the Slucius Malfoy one. It's awesome. It weighs, like, five pounds. I mean, on the one hand, which is more than most snakes can say, Tom Riddle's history is... Well, riddled with snake imagery and legacy and powers. For one, he's the last living relative of Salazar Slytherin, whose house mascot is a snake, and whose wand is made of snake wood with a basilisk horn core, who left a basilisk in the school for a thousand years, and who could speak to snakes. So, you know, seems like a pretty nice guy. By the way, have I shown you guys this great hat I got for Christmas last year? God, I look bad at hats. Voldemort himself is also a parcel mouth, and we know that even his most direct relatives, the Gaunts, were doing a lot of talking to snakes, so it's not some, like, distant relation, it's still going strong. And then there's the fact that Voldemort owns a pet snake who he shares a bit of his soul with, so, uh, yeah, he's definitely into snake culture, but is that any reason for his appearance to start mimicking them? I mean, what if he was a super dark wizard obsessed with bunny rabbits? Would his appearance start mimicking them instead? Which probably sounds adorable unless you've seen Donnie Darko. So then is it just a coincidence? Does making horcruxes always make you look like a snake and he just happened to luck out that he also loves snakes? My logic is that although we don't know the full act of making a horcrux, we do know that it is an act of pure evil without a doubt. And if doing that makes you start looking like a snake, then almost ipso facto, snakes have to be evil. Right? Which I know for a lot of people probably isn't much of a jump. I mean, it's not like the normal reaction to finding a snake in your bed or just across your path or learning that one was even born in the state you live in is a very comforting thought, right? But in the end, they are still just animals. Sure, in the wizarding world, it does seem like snakes get looped in with evil a lot, but Almost all of the time, you can trace that all the way back to Slytherin himself, who just so happened to love snakes and was a blood purist, and as a result, the two have just gotten, like, really mangled up. Like a couple of snakes. But Harry does have that lovely conversation with the snake at the zoo, and Isolt's sire does have that great moment with the horned serpent on Pottermore, and Newt even compliments Tina by calling her a middlehead, meaning the middle of a three-headed snake called a rune spore. Point is, not all snakes are bad, and and not all compliments are well thought out. And yet, Voldemort still ends up looking like a snake. Why? Well, the good news is, I think we have totally figured this one out. So allow me to invite you down the rabbit hole with me. Or perhaps I should say, snake hole. Or, you know what, honestly, they kind of both work for this video. 
Our first step down this path was just to track his transformation over time as it related to him creating Horcruxes. And for the most part, this wasn't that difficult. We know that as a student at Hogwarts, he was still popular, handsome, good looking, charming, all of that, and he managed to open the Chamber of Secrets, kill Moaning Myrtle, and that was his first Horcrux, the diary. The one Horcrux on its own doesn't seem to do much to his appearance at all, nor does even the second Horcrux, which was the ring. He makes the two just three months apart, but then several years later when he's working for Borgen and Burks and trying to get fantastic items out of Hepzibah Smith, he still retains all of his really good looks, except for one tiny thing. His first sign of any transformation is when Hepzibah is showing him the cup and locket. First, when he sees the cup, Harry thought he saw a red gleam in his dark eyes, and then again when he sees the locket. There was no mistaking it this time. Voldemort's eyes flashed scarlet at the words, and Harry saw his knuckles whiten on the locket's chain. Yes, the red eyes. Which is kind of interesting in its own right, because although there are snakes out there that have red eyes, the more important ones in the story, the Basilisk and Nagini, both have yellow eyes. Either way, when he meets with Hepzibah, he makes two more Horcruxes, the cup and the locket, and then we don't see him resurface again until he's applying for the Defense Against the Dark Arts job with Dumbledore, when he's also made the diadem for a total of five. And after five, yeah, then he's really starting to look pretty grim. His features were not those Harry had seen emerge from the Great Stone Cauldron almost two years before. They were not as snake-like, the eyes were not yet scarlet, the face not yet mask-like, and yet he was no longer handsome Tom Riddle. It was as though his features had been blurred and burned. They were waxy and oddly distorted, and the whites of his eyes now had a permanently bloody look, though the pupils were not yet the slits that Harry knew they would become. He was wearing a long black cloak, and his face was as pale as the snow glistening on his shoulders. Yeah, now we're getting somewhere. We got the pale face, we got the red eyes, we got the distorted features, and yet, Harry specifically says he does not look snake-like yet. Harry just happens to know what he will eventually look like, and kind of uses that as a reference point. And by the time that happens, he'll have made an additional two more Horcruxes. Nagini, and unbeknownst to Voldemort, Harry. And naturally, Nagini is the one that stands out to me there, because up until this point, he's definitely been looking more and more generically evil, but not more specifically snake-like. And yet, there can definitely be no mistaking his appearance post-rebirth. Harry even describes his appearance as scaly before Wormtail puts him in the potion, when he's just that, like, little child new body thing. And just after the revival, we learn from Voldemort how he got back into that tiny rudimentary body. He tells the Death Eaters it was thanks to a concoction of unicorn blood, Nagini's venom, and a few spells of his own invention. Actually, fun fact, whatever else it is that Wormtail had to do to get him into that rudimentary body is so disgusting that apparently it made J.K. Rowling's editor almost puke, and just that fact alone has made us so fascinated with what did he have to do? And honestly, I have no idea what it might be, although I can't help but notice that in this situation, we have the sort of astral form of Voldemort, a man, possessing snakes, and then we also have Nagini, who used to be a woman but is now a snake, and then we end up with this sort of half-baby, half-snake creature thing, and I don't know, you can do the disgusting math for yourself, I think. One snake man plus one snake woman equals <laughs> Seems like enough to make an editor puke if you ask me. That's just a thought though, especially since Dumbledore says he thinks Nagini is the only thing Voldemort ever cared about. And honestly, I thought that might be it. It seemed like a good explanation. He uses Nagini's venom to get his body back, he puts a bit of his soul into her body, I mean, just seems like a good recipe to end up all snaky. Except then we came across this one little sentence in Sorcerer's Stone describing what his face looks like when Quirrell takes the turban off. Where there should have been a back to Quirrell's head, there was a face. The most terrible face Harry had ever seen. It was chalk white with glaring red eyes and slits for nostrils. Like a snake. Ugh. Well, wouldn't you know it, holy living noodles with eyes, he had a snake face before Goblin. Uh, yeah, I totally forgot about that sentence because the movie thought they'd take some creative liberties on screen and give Voldemort a nose and whatever, and honestly, kind of took the wind out of my sails, and yet, it leaves us with a pretty easy explanation. Because 
If you will recall, when Voldemort went to go kill Harry, he had only made the five Horcruxes and he did not look snake-like yet. But when he appears on the back of Quirrell's head, he does look snake-like. So we really just have to ask ourselves, what happened between those two events? And what happened was that Voldemort spent about 10 years as sort of a vague spirit. I mean, in his own words, he was less than a spirit, less than the meanest ghost. And yet he still had one power left to him, the ability to possess animals. And the animal of his choice was most frequently a snake. And this, as far as we can tell, almost has to be the reason he takes on the snake form. Because for nearly 10 years he had basically no form at all and he spent a lot of that time just possessing this other particular shape. In my mind I'm thinking of it as kind of like wet concrete setting very very slowly. By the time he finally possesses another human and gets a new face again it only makes sense that the concrete has sort of finally set into a more permanent snake-like looking face. It's kind of like how when Peter Pettigrew finally transforms back into a human after 12 years as a rat, he kind of looks rat-like. And then who knows, maybe he got the pale skin from Quirrell. I mean, he did spend about a year in that body too. Yeah. But boom, there you go. That is why Voldemort looks like a snake. And if you want to add on top of that, all the stuff they do in Goblet to get him back to his full body on his own with all of Nagini's venom and stuff, go ahead and throw it on there. It can only make things worse. But Ben, my question for you and everyone else is, one, what's your New Year's resolution? And two, what do you think? Is this indeed why Voldemort looks like a snake? Let me know in the towel section down below. Don't forget, Carlin Brother Coffee subscriptions are now available. Get 50% off your first bag and 20% off every bag after that. Head over to carlinbrotherscoffee.com. Guys, thanks for watching. As always, please remember to like this video if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future Harry Potter action from us. If you'd like to see Voldemort's last Horcrux theory, you can check out this video right here. Or if you want to see us rank all of his Horcruxes, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, that's all I've got for you today, man. I will see you in another life, brother.